Dr. Atkinson is on a roller coaster. So how is this indicative of a mechanism? Well, there's actually three activation energies for three steps. And at the top of those potential energy peaks there are the reaction intermediates, neither reactant nor product, but somewhere in between. Very unstable, high energy, perhaps a pentavalent carbon. So let's look at a simple two-step mechanism. B jumps off of A, and then C jumps onto B. Very exciting. Step one, B comes off, and step two, C goes on. So those are the two steps in this two-step mechanism. Looking at a potential energy diagram, uh, you can use progress of reaction at the bottom. The IB allows time, but that's wrong. It should be progress of reaction. You can see the step one and step two each correspond to those two bumps. The activation energy for the first one, well, that's the height of the first bump and the height of the second bump is the activation energy for the second step. I find it helpful to draw the lines out, in this case, the red and the green, just to make sure I, I can see clearly those two halves. Now, since EA1 is greater than EA2, that's going to be the rate determining step, the first step. It has the highest activation energy, therefore it is the slowest step in that mechanism. If I add up the steps in the mechanism to get the equation for the reaction, I can pop the reactants and the final products in at each end of that energy diagram. Delta H for the first step is there, and that's endothermic, and for the second step, it's there, and that is exothermic. The overall difference from the reactants to the products is there in purple, and that is delta H for the reaction. And so you can see that delta H is going to be the sum of delta H1 plus delta H2. And that's going to give you delta H for the reaction. Some people find it easier if there are numbers there, and some people find it easier if they just did biology instead of chemistry. Okay, so there's three peaks, three steps in our mechanism, one, two, and three. The first one, the products have a higher energy than the reactants, and so that's going to be endothermic. The second one, the products have a lower energy than those reactants, and so that's going to be exothermic, releasing energy. And the final one, the products have a lower energy and again, exothermic, energy is released. And let's look at the three intermediate sets of data. The difference between 20 and 40 is plus 20, so that's delta H1. The height of the bump, the first bump, is 40. The second one, the difference between those kind of intermediary reactants and intermediary products is minus 10. And the height of the bump, 120 minus 40 is 80. And that is the activation energy. Third one, so this is XO, so make sure it's negative for delta H. And the energy is only 5. The activation energy is only 5. Overall, well, I could sum my three delta H's and get the delta H over all. Or I could look at the very leftmost reactants and the very rightmost products. It gives me minus 10 for delta H. And all this business with adding the different delta H's to get the final delta H is actually Hess's law. The rate determining step is the middle one, has the highest activation energy.